Life in Spain's America. In 1724, Francisco Menendez and nine other African men arrived in St. Augustine with the help of English-speaking Yamasi Indians. The Africans had heard rumors that many years earlier King Charles II of Spain had issued a royal edict giving liberty to all, the men as well as the women. Because of this, Menendez and other men expected to become free men as soon as they sought baptism and converted to Catholicism. Somehow, at some point following the Yamasi War, a Yamasi known as Mad Dog gained control of Francisco Menendez's faith and sold him to the Spanish after he reached Florida. Details of the timing and circumstances of that sale are unknown. At first, the Spanish governor, Antonio de Benavides, seemed to honor the edict to free the slaves. He sent a delegation to Charlestown to negotiate an agreement on the runaways and offered to purchase them for 200 pesos each. He also wrote to the authorities of Spain, but he had not received a reply when the English made threats to come and reclaim Menendez and the other Africans who arrived with him. Governor Benavidez's response was to sell the men locally. He justified his action by arguing that he feared the English might come to reclaim them by force. He then used money from the sale to reimburse the English slaveholders who complained about the loss of their property. Francisco Menendez and the nine other men were purchased by some of the most prominent citizens of St. Augustine. Menendez was purchased by the royal accountant, Don Francisco Menendez. Some of the other nine were purchased by the royal treasurer, military officers, and even some religious officials. Others were sold to owners who took them to Havana, Cuba. Although re-enslaved, Francisco Menendez was appointed by Governor Antonio de Benavides to command a black militia. Menendez and his men helped defend South Augustine against an attack of the South Carolina militia led by Colonel John Palmer in 1728. In 1733, Spanish King Philip V issued two edicts. According to the first of these edicts, there would be no future reimbursement made to the English for the loss of their slaves. It also stated the offer of freedom. The second edict commended Menendez's men for their bravery, but it indicated that they would be required to complete four years of royal service before they would be free. Although he was enslaved by the royal accountant, Don Francisco Menendez, and yearned to be fully free, Francisco Menendez and the accountant apparently had high regard for each other. When it came time to select a Spanish name for himself, Francisco Menendez adopted the very same name as that of the accountant. While working for such a high Spanish official, he may have learned a lot about government. 
during his period of servitude, Francisco applied his talent for learning languages to learn to read and write Spanish. He put his newly acquired knowledge to good use. Ever mindful that he and the men he had escaped with had come to St. Augustine seeking complete freedom, he petitioned Governor Benavides and the auxiliary bishop of Cuba. Nothing came out of Menendez's request. In 1737, Manuel de Mantiano became the new governor of Florida. And once again, Francisco Menendez petitioned for freedom. This time, a Yamasi cacique, or chief, named Jorge, supported his petition. Chief Jorge stated that Captain Menendez and three other Africans had fought bravely for three years during the Yamasi War. Although Menendez and the others had been patient and more than loyal, they had been betrayed by a heathen named Mad Dog. However, Chief Jorge did not blame Mad Dog. Instead, he blamed the Spanish who had purchased these loyal allies. After reviewing the case, the new governor granted unconditional freedom to the petitioners on March 15, 1738. Following this, Governor Montiano established the freemen from South Carolina in a new town under the leadership of Captain Menendez. The new town Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mose became the first officially sanctioned free black town in what is now the United States.